Now, okay, so in this Blender 2.8 video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model a hat, okay, a fedora hat, all right, from a cylinder. Okay, so right now we have the default cube over here, and uh, we're going to get rid of it. So the shortcut to get rid of it is just to press the X key to delete this. We are going to create an eight-sided eight -sided cylinder. So press Shift A and then go to the Mesh category and select Cylinder. Now when you create a cylinder, you want to change the number of sides. You go down over here, click the drop-down menu and change the number of vertices to eight. Now, for the cap fill type, we want to change it to triangle fan. Okay, so that if you press Z to switch between the different shades, you can see that this is now a eight-sided cylinder, okay, with a triangle fan cap on the top and on the bottom. All right, so in order to speed things up a little bit, Okay, make sure that your orientation follows mine with the green line cutting down like this and then the red line cutting across this direction. I'm going to get rid of half, okay, half of these faces. All right, so I'm going to switch back to shaded mode again. Press Z and then go to solid. Now, press tab, okay, to go into edit mode. Now, when you press the tab key, you notice you have access to all these tools. All right, now we want to left mouse click and drag a box to select half of these uh, faces here. Now we are in vertex mode, so if you click on the face selection mode here, this button, or press number 3, okay, you'll be able to left mouse click and drag and select half of the cylindrical faces like that. Okay, But because we only select what the camera sees, we are going to enable the x-ray view here. So we can try again, drag and select half of the faces, press X and delete away the faces. And also, we want to delete the faces at the bottom. You can click on one face to select it, click on the black dot, holding down the shift key to multiple select. Then press X again to delete away the faces. Okay, so now we have an object looking like this. All right, and we're going to Press tab again to get out to object mode. Next, I want to introduce you to using modifiers. Okay, move your cursor and click on the icon, the blue icon that looks like a spanner tool. Click on add modifier, right, and locate the modifier that says mirror. So if you follow exactly my orientation and when you apply the mirror, right, you should notice another half will have reappeared. Okay, so Right now, the other side will contain the same uh, mirrored half because we are mirroring in the x-axis. Now, there is one more setting that I want you all to turn on, that is to turn on clipping. Okay, with clipping on, okay, if I go to edit mode now, if I press tab to go to edit, with clipping mode on, and if I press A to select all, and I press G to move, you notice the center, because of the clipping is on, will be stuck together. Alright, so this is very useful for us when we are doing our modeling. Alright, so let us refine this, uh, this cylind cylindrical structure now so that we have enough subdivisions right to pull out the head. Okay, so first I want to select, okay, press A to select all, and if everything is selected, it's represented by this color. If nothing is selected, if you press Alt A, if nothing is selected, you will turn into this gray color. So I'm going to press A again to select all. Press G followed by Z to move it up until okay, approximately the base is lined up with the ground like that. Okay, And I'm going to select the bottom vertices here. So press 1 to go to vertex selection mode. Press Alt A or AA twice to deselect. And then select the bottom vertices. Now the quick way to select is to hold down the Alt key and left mouse click and then any vertices along the same edge loop will be selected okay rather than you click and select one by one or you can also uh, left mouse click and drag and select them okay the reason is we want to scale them outwards to form a tapered shape 
as our base model for the hat. All right. So if I were to scale right now, you'll notice that it will only scale in this direction and you notice it has this ovoid shape. Now, I'm going to undo that. You can actually change the pivot location so that you can scale it based on the location of the cursor. All right. So to do that, you have to change the button here, the pivot point right over here. If I click on it, the default right now is a median point. Median point simply means that the vertices right will actually scale based on the approximate center, which is actually right about here. Okay. So in reality, right, the center of the median point of all these selected vertices are here. So if I want the median point to be based on the cursor, now remember, the cursor, right, you can change the position of the cursor by holding down the shift and right mouse button. Shift and right mouse button, you can change the position of the cursor. But we want the cursor to be back in the origin position. So you press shift C. Shift C will reset the position of the cursor. So what we really want is to have the vertices scale using the cursor as the center. So to do that, you have to click on this button here, the pivot point button, and change it to 3D cursor. So when it's changed to the 3D cursor, and this time if you press S to scale, it's going to scale the vertices based on the center or the position of the cursor. And if you look from the top view, okay, if you look from the top view, you will notice that now the vertices have been scaled up evenly rather than appearing in an ovoid shape. Okay, so once you've done that, Okay, we can change the uh, pivot center back to median point again. Right, so we have our base shape now. Now we want to extrude the edge so that we have the rim of the head. So go to edge mode, which is number two. All right, if you press number two, you notice that the edges are still selected. Now if you accidentally deselect them, you can hold down to the Alt key and left mouse click and then the edge will still be selected for you. And now we want to extrude it. So if you extrude, the shortcut key is just E, all right? Or you can right mouse click and then you can access extrude edges. Okay, if you cannot remember what is the shortcut key for extrude. So when you select extrude, you notice that, hey, wherever I move my cursor, the edges are going to follow where the cursor is going. So that is not the result that we want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right mouse click so the edge jumps back into place. Now, you can still use the 3D cursor as a center point and you can also scale it up. It will give you the same rim. Okay, that is one way. Another way, let me just undo, is to use something called the shrink flatten tool. Right, the shrink flatten tool, which is over here. And the shortcut key is Alt S. So if I press Alt S, it's going to scale it up and it's uh, going to give you pretty much the same result. All right, so now we have the rim of the head, okay? So with the rim of the head, we need to add another edge loop over here. So to add an edge loop, okay, you can use the insert edge loop tool, the loop cut tool, or just press the shortcut key, control R, okay? And then notice that when I move a cursor over an edge, a perpendicular edge, the a preview of where the loop cut is gonna appear will show up. Left mouse click, and then you can drag it left and right to position the cut. I'm going to position the cut right in the center. So if you want it to be in the center, you just need to right mouse click out. Right now, we have created the extra edge loop. Okay, next, we want to insert more edge loops around the top part of this triangle fan. Okay, so this triangle fan faces right to bring in to cut a loop around here, we have to manually use the knife tool. Okay, the shortcut for knife is very easy to remember. The first letter of knife is K, so you just press K. Okay, so to cut, you just simply move over the edge and left mouse click to start cutting. And if you look at the bottom here of the menu, it shows you a lot of shortcut uh, tools. All right. For example, if you hold down to your home control key while you're cutting, it's going to snap to the center of these edges, which is what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to hold down to the control key, and then I'm going to move my uh, knife cursor to the center, left mouse click once, then move to the next edge, left mouse click again, left mouse click, 
left mouse click and left mouse click and once you're done you just press enter to finish the cut okay so now we have enough detail to start to modify this base shape into a fedora hat okay so we are going to go to object mode first just press tab to go back to, to object mode okay and you want to apply another modifier to round this shape up okay i'm going to temporarily turn off the x-ray view by clicking on this button all right and i'm going to apply a modifier subsurface modifier now because my uh zoom it software right is linked to the shortcut I, I will not be able to use the control one two three but if you press control one you will get the equivalent of adding a subdivision surface modifier so this is subdivision surface level one okay if you go to the settings of the subdivision modifier now take note now you have two modifiers you got the mirror modifier here and you have the subdivision surface modifier here okay and uh, i'll go through all these buttons a little a bit later and you can see right now in our viewport it is only subdivided one level you can increase by clicking on the arrow button here once and three times okay and you can see now our base hat right looks like this and you can see the surface is very faceted if you want this to smooth out you just need to right mouse click on it and shape smooth left mouse click to apply shape smooth so now you have a smooth base shape in fact now that you have this shape right you can literally model any type of hats you want you can model a stetson hat you can model a bowler hat you can model a top hat a cowboy hat australian bush hat okay just from this base shape okay now all you have to do is to insert more edge loops and move the vertices around and start to form the basis of your hat okay so the first thing i want to do is just to insert more loop cuts so to harden the edge here okay you can apply a bevel if you want for example if i go down to alt and left mouse click to select this edge you can right mouse click on it and then you can choose bevel edges and you can see the equivalent shortcut key here Control b so select it and then you can drag left and right and you notice now the top part here is becoming harder okay likewise for the shape below here now you notice that we see both the subdivided model and the low rest model at the same time and sometimes it's a bit hard to see which is which okay and selection wise it's also a little bit hard you can try turning on the x-ray mode button and it can make selection a little bit easier or another way is that you can go over to the subsurface modifier you can see this icon here okay you can click on this button to let the subdivided mesh right fall onto the surface okay this will look almost like uh, what you see in Maya okay so if I deactivate this then you can see both the subdivided surface and the low resolution model okay so now to select this loop cut again you hold down to alt key left mouse click and if you want to apply a bevel here just that i can so that i can have a hard edge okay we already learned that the shortcut key is ctrl b for bevel you just press ctrl b and then you just drag slowly and then now you have a bevel edge and take note the bevel tool settings will also appear it gives you gives you option like increasing the number of segments if you want or, or changing the width okay so this is very helpful now remember once you apply the bevel like if you click elsewhere that tool will disappear so that means the changes will be permanent all right so once i've got this okay i've got enough detail and right now i can start to shape my fedora hat so i'm going to switch over to vertex mode so the shortcut key is one so press number one on your keyboard and we can start and because we are having a mirror modifier i just need to model half of the hat so i'm going to select the rear vertices first i'm going to select these three vertices at the rear then i'm going to press g followed by z and then bring it up and then now we have a rim that actually goes up all right and using our still using our uh, pivot base on the uh, cursor okay you can use scale to scale it inwards okay 
press S to scale it inwards so that you have a slightly smaller rim. Okay. So I'm happy with this. I'm gonna now I'm gonna select these two remaining outer vertices. Press G to grab and move, and then press Z to lock in the Z axis, and then just pull it down gently. All right. So now we have a tip down uh, front brim of the hat. Okay. All right. So now the brim looks good, but what about the top part here? Now, if you look at a picture of a uh, reel, let's Google for some uh, fedora hats, all right? I think fedora hats are really cool looking and they make a very good uh, modeling subject. So you can see we have several images of a fedora hat and the thing that we want to model is this uh, section here, okay, the hand grab, okay, this section here that we want to uh, model. So we want to push in the vertices of the cylinder inwards and the center bring it downwards. Okay. And we have something that looks almost like a uh, Indiana Jones hat here. So you can see, depending on the type that you want, you can actually collapse the center inwards like that. Okay. So we have our reference. So now we know that we need to push the sides in. And you notice that, oh, I don't have enough detail here. So I just press Control R and insert another edge loop, okay? Control R, move your cursor here, left mouse click, and then maybe put it here. So I can grab this vertex, okay, and then press G. Okay, make sure you go to a correct orientation, press G and then just push it in. Okay, maybe these two vertices, I wanna push it in as well, all right? Okay, right now I notice the top part of my rim is too high already. So I'm just going to grab all these vertices, press G followed by Z, and then just bring it down a little. Okay, so you can see this depression going in. All right, and if you want, you can grab these vertices in front here, and then press G, and then pull it forward a little bit. Okay, and now for the center portion, you can select the center vertices here. Okay, and then you can press G followed by Z to pull it down. And yeah, basically you just sculpt by pushing and moving the vertices around. Okay. So if you feel that you still don't have enough detail, like for example, I don't want the transition here to smooth out. So I'm going to increase another subdivision here. So I'm going to press Control R, left mouse click, now I have an extra detail, and I want this area to actually maintain its position here. And then now, this one I can collapse it inwards some more. And maybe these three vertices, I'm going to just press G followed by Y to push it forward a little bit. Okay. So right now, I have a much nicer looking profile, and I have the grab area. I'm going to turn off X-ray so I can have a better look at it. Okay, if you if you need to, yeah, it's a good idea to take a look at actual pictures so they can judge what is the shape of what the head is supposed to be like. Okay, so press Tab again to go back to edit mode. I'm going to turn on X-ray again so I can see all the vertices. Press AA to deselect or Alt A, Alt A to deselect. Then press B to select this group. Uh, my habit is because I use the old version of Blender, I always press B. But now you don't have to. You can just left mouse click and then just grab these, these vertices and then put it down. So I'm just going to reshape this a little bit so that it has a much more uh, fabric look. Okay, it's my habit. I, I keep pressing B. Okay, but you don't have to. You just left mouse click. All right, and then I think I'm happy with this. Okay, it's got a nice look to it now. Now we want to create the ribbon that runs across it. Now I felt that my my rim, the rim that runs around the hat is a little bit too big. In fact, it looks more like a cowboy hat. So let's let's modify this a little bit. Uh, we can select the faces on the outside here. So to go to face mode, press number three, then hold down to Alt. Now move the cursor over to the edge here. If you hold on the Alt key and left mouse click, you can select only the outer rim. Now, 
to increase the selection, you can press Control Number Pad Plus. But for now, I don't want to do that. I just want to scale this down uh, smaller. Remember, the scale is based on the position of the cursor. So if I scale this down, if I press S and scale, you can see now I can bring the rim down smaller. Okay, now the head looks a little bit more proportional. Okay, I don't have such a giant rim. Okay. And I can start to decorate the the ribbon that is around the base of the hat. So how do I create the ribbon? Well, I can just extract it from these faces here. Now, I press tab again just now to go back into edit mode. So hold on to your Alt key and left mouse click on the edge. And then now, this loop will be selected. Okay. So now, I need to duplicate this so that I can make it as a separate ribbon. Now, you can also press E to extrude it out, okay, but in order to have a definition, okay, this is what I do. I just select the face and extrude it out. But if you look over here at the edge here, you can see that we definitely need to insert more edge loops. Okay, you need to insert one edge loop right here and another edge loop here to give it definition. All right, so this might not be the best way to create the ribbon because this is actually part of the hat. So I want to create a ribbon that is actually separate. So let me go to edit mode again, and I'm going to undo. Okay, and I'm going to go and undo the extrude as well. Okay, and let's try that again. So this time, I'm going to Alt and select this ribbon area, and then I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate, Shift D. So if I hit Shift D, you notice that now I've created a separate object, okay, or a separate element. Okay, technically, right, this separated, separated piece is still part of the hat. So if I want to detach this piece, I have to press the shortcut key P. Okay, P for peeling, peeling and onion, okay? So if I hit P <coughs> and then I choose selection, that piece will become a separate object. Okay, I'm going to press tab now to go into object mode. And I'm going to switch off X-ray for the time being. Now, you notice that now I have two separate objects. And the good thing is that this separate object also inherited its own modifiers. I applied a mirror modifier for the head and the subdivision. The separated piece also inherited the same piece. But now we have an issue. The ribbon is too small. Not a problem. All we need to do is just press S to scale it out slightly. Okay, and move your cursor. Now we have the ribbon that is just outside and it's just nice. Okay, the only thing that doesn't look right now is the thickness of the head. Okay, so we have to apply a solidify modifiers. Okay, not only to the head but also to the ribbon. Okay, so for the ribbon, okay, we're going to apply a solidify. Okay. Modifier and now you can see we can see some thickness on the ribbon already Okay, you can increase the thickness by clicking and dragging to the right of the slider here Now we're going to apply the same thing to the Hat so go to add modifier and click on solidify and now the hat has some thickness Okay, so we're gonna give it some thickness and Increase the thickness of the hat All right so right now, our head is more or less completed. The only thing that is missing is the materials. All right. So we're going to give it some basic materials. To add materials, go and search for the icon that looks like a ball. So click on it. And right now, there are no materials in the scene. As you can see, it's very empty. So to create our first material, we need to click on New. Okay, the default material will be a principal uh, BSD material. Okay, and base color is this white color. So if you want to change the color, you have to click on the swatch here, the color swatch here, and then we change it to another color. Okay, so right now we will not be able to see any colors because we need to change the, the shading mode in order from solid to look deaf. Okay, so on only on look deaf, then you'll be able to see the color. All right, so what about the band here? So select the band, okay, do the same thing. Now, if you want to apply the same color, 
you can click on this symbol here and then you can see the first material that we created and then the original material uh, in Blender which is material and then the second one that I created earlier on. So if you want to apply the same material you can just click on it and then it will now be yellow as well. Over here quickly you can see there's a number two. This basically tells you there are two objects using the same material. Now if you want to modify the color of this band you can click on the number and you will make this material unique. So although this material is the same color as the first one, it is now a unique material. That means if I were to change the color, it will not affect the original one. So this is what the number stands for just now earlier on. Okay. So let me just change it to a much more logical color, maybe a dark brown. Okay. And maybe this one a light beige color. Okay, and then that's it. This is your fedora hat. But is this really complete? Well, if you want to export this out, okay, the uh, if you export it as an OBJ, uh, you want to op open it up in say Maya or any other programs, uh, it will actually compress or it will apply something called applying your modifiers. Okay, so you can see every modifier has an apply, apply, apply. Okay, so if you don't apply a modifier, your original object will still be this low resolution model. Okay, however, if you were to apply, okay, let me just save this model first. Fedora, Fedora hat 2. Okay, let's let, let's see what happens when I hit apply. If, you, if to apply, you need to go to object mode. And then if you go to the modifiers of the object, if I hit apply for mirror, boom. Right now the mirror disappears. But if you go to look at the object, the object no longer is a half object. It is a single object. All right. Now, what about the uh, Catmo Club, the subdivision surface? If I hit apply, boom. Okay, I cannot apply. There's a rule in Blender. You cannot apply modifiers when you're in edit mode. You have to be in object mode, then you can apply. When I hit apply, Okay, seems like nothing has happened, but the subdivision has disappeared. But this time, if you go to edit mode, you notice the number of faces and edges has increased. All right, but it is still okay. It is still the original head. Okay, and now let's take a look at the modifier here and these buttons. If I click on the, uh, this is for rendering. That means the when this camera icon is active, when you render, this modifier will be applied. This one, the second one, is displaying the modifier. Now take note at the edge. When I click on this button, it will display the modifier working. When I uncheck it, it disappears. Okay, so this is what it means. All right, and then this one will show it on all the vertices. Okay, including the modified thickness versions. Okay, so now I will just hit apply and see what happens. Hit apply. Okay, again, I need to go to object mode. Press tab to go to object mode, then hit apply. All right, so now we finally have our hat with all the modifiers applied. So you can see none of the modifiers exist here anymore. And you can see you have a very high resolution hat. Now, the ribbon, we still have not applied the modifiers yet. That's why it is still there. Okay, so if I were to apply the modifiers, the same thing will happen. Let me go to object mode, apply, apply, and apply. And then this ribbon will now be a single object, no longer a mirror, and also an object with a thickness. Okay? Now, if you look at the scene, we have a light, okay? And then we have a camera. So this is the camera, all right? So if you want to see through the camera, the shortcut key is zero, okay? Press zero, and then you will look through the camera. Now, if you want to move the camera, okay, you can select the edge here. Now the edge of the camera is selected. And okay, let's see whether I can select this. Okay, just drag a box until you see orange box selected. If you press G, you can pan your camera. Okay, if you press G followed by Z Z twice, then you can pull your camera further away. Okay. But what if you want to change your camera to this view? Okay, how do we move the camera to this view? Now, there's a shortcut key for that. Control, Alt, number pad, zero. 
Okay, control alt, number pad zero, and then the camera will jump to the view that you want. All right. So I'm going to select the camera again and then press G to pan to lock. Now, some of you might find this method very, very tedious and uh, not very intuitive. There's a better way that is to use, press N to bring up the viewport properties under the view, enable this lock camera to view. So when this is locked, you notice the red line now appears. That means I can now use it just like my viewport to reposition my camera and render. Okay, now you can temporarily unlock this so they can zoom in closer and you can turn the lock back again so that you don't have such a smaller view. Okay, that's what you can do. And finally, we can try to render it out and see what it looks like. Now, we have to choose our renderer. The current renderer now is an EV rendering engine. Okay, we want to change it to cycles. Okay, and the device, we want to use GPU compute because we've got a good graphics card here. And then we can render it by pressing F12 or render render image. The shortcut key, F12. So I press F12 and then now you can see that it's being rendered in cycles. Okay, you can see the shadows being cast by the light and so on. Okay, so once you want to get out of this, you just need to press escape. Okay, and then you'll be back to your 3D viewport. All right. Okay, I'm going to create a plane surface, Shift A, Mesh, Plane. Then I'm going to scale this up. And then I'm going to select both the hat and the ribbon, G followed by Z. And uh, maybe the hat, uh, the ground surface give you a different color. Okay, and then go back to my camera view, press 0. Okay, and then uh, reposition the camera and render it again. Press F12 and then see what happens. Now, the good thing about uh, the Cycles renderer is that you can actually see uh, your renderer on the viewport. You don't have to always press F12 to render. Okay, even though the, uh, the rendering you can see is, is very good, you can see the shadows are very realistic, even at the default shadows. Right. So if you want to view the rendered view uh, in real time, okay, you have to go and press Z and then choose rendered. Okay, and then you can actually show you what the hat will look like when it's rendered. This is almost like the real time preview in uh, in the Arnold uh, renderer in Maya. Okay, so you can actually grab the lights, okay, click on it and then press G, reposition it and the shadows, everything will update in real time. Okay, so this is really, really good. Now, if you want to change the light to another type of light, you can also do that in the uh, light properties. If you can click on the light symbol here, you can change it in the spotlight, okay? So that now you can just press R to rotate the spotlight, select the, uh, okay, right now when I rotate, it's still rotating based on the cursor, so I need to change it back to median point. So now I can rotate, okay, just press R to rotate. Remember R for rotate. Okay, you can change the size of the light, uh, <coughs> the angle of the spotlight, okay, and so on. Okay, I think the video has gone long enough. Uh, maybe I'll just do one more, just render. Let's say I like this, I, I want to render this. I press F12 to render, and I want to save this image. If you are just only rendering a single image, okay, we'll wait for the render to finish. Okay, you can notice the quality is pretty good. And once it's done, we can actually save this. So how do we save this image? All right, there's a shortcut key uh, over here. You can click on, uh, normally I think, uh, let's see, where is it? Okay, so this is a new one. In the old, uh, old days, it was F3. So F3 now is linked to a help file. So you want to save this image, you can click on image, and then you can save as, or you can say save. Then I'm just going to put it on the desktop and I'm going to call this my first, my first Fedora and then save. And it's going to save in default as a P, uh, PNG. So let's go, uh, go to the desktop and then look at the how handy work. So this is the result. Okay, so you can try to uh, model this yourself uh, in Blender 2.8 and 
you can see how great this software is. All right, so now I'll just stop the recording.